And next talk, uh, Gregory Francisco, please. Insight on flare forecast with explainable deep learning. Let's stick to five to five for more. Okay, okay. Minutes. Oh, it's gonna be tough. Yeah. As I was then. <laughs> Hello everyone, so I'm gonna talk to you about uh, explainable deep learning on solar flare forecasts. So the idea is to show how uh, with simple explainable techniques, it can help us to gain trust in these black box models and also to potentially study and identify solar flare precursors and, and also find uh, model weaknesses and ways to help us eventually to, to find ways to, to improve them. So, uh, so basically, I have four models, four different models that I used. So the first one, I use only a magnetogram in input. Uh, the second one, only coronal images. And the two first one, uh, I use combination of magnetogram 1600, 304, to uh, 211 uh, angstrom images, uh, with the idea to, to have uh, images representing the different layers of the solar atmosphere in combination to the magnetogram to see if it improves the performances. And uh, the first interesting result is that the coronal images alone, uh, if we combine them in a specific way, <coughs> can lead to performances nearly as good as the magnetogram. Um, and, but this is interesting because it only happens when you combine them. So it could suggest that's what um, is very important for explaining solar flares upcoming, it's in the next 24 hours. So maybe it's the relative uh, variation in intensity of the different wavelengths. And maybe we can study that with uh, explainability. And uh, atmospheric models have performances up to 10% higher than the magnetogram. So it really suggests that we can find interesting flare precursors even 24 hours ahead in uh, UV images. And so now the explainability. So we use guided grad cam. So it's the combination of grad cam and guided backpropagation, which are uh, very standard visualization methods for CNN. So the first column here is the grad cam. It helps you to identify the most discriminative region of the input. The guided backprop here in the second column, it allows you to visualize the pixel contribution of the input to the last convolutional layers. So it shows you what sees and learns to extract your uh, convolutions. But it's not discriminative, so in the end we point-wise combine this to have class discriminative uh, fine-grained details of what's happening in the, in the model. And so in the last column, I um, put a mask on the, on the tail of the distribution of these most uh, discriminative features. And uh, for the atmospheric models, I only show you the, the overlap of the final result for each uh, layers with the contribution of each layer to, to the prediction. And, uh, and so basically, uh, we find that each model converges consistently to, to using uh, physical features. So in the case of the magnetogram, like peels, uh, but also small magnetic elements, like their numbers, uh, which is known to be contributing to the D-index, which is a very discriminative uh, 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 flare precursors for strong flares like X-flares. And also, uh, with these first models, we identify maybe what we could call polarity sandwich that seem to be consistently used. Uh, so it's when one magnetic polarity of one element is in between towards the polarity element of opposite polarities. And it seems like it kind of used the whole area of this in sandwich element. So it is worth to, to study maybe if there is a real correlation here. And so I'm working on a segmentation tool to do that more systematically. And uh, on the corona, it uses uh, bright structures, sigmoids, uh, ropes, intricated loops. And, uh, and yeah, so that's uh, good to, to, to see that the model learns things and that we can maybe learn from, from them. So these first statistics are made by uh, observation. And I'm working on, on tools to, to, to make them uh, more systematic and generalize them 
on uh, every class of layers. And uh, yes. And next, we can also use them to to identify artifacts and model weaknesses. For instance, on the limbs for magnetograms. So we see it focused mostly on the on the noise of the limbs. And uh, and but for the coronal model, it works much better. And that's it. So. Uh, and so yeah, in conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, do we have any questions offline? Okay, we have one online qu question uh, uh, from Christopher Brook, please. Hi, thank you. Um, yes, I'm just wondering, you said you use the magnetograms. Are they just the line of sight magnetograms? Uh, yes, line of sight. So I'm then wondering if, um, so obviously they don't really have information on current, right? Um, so I'm wondering if the, the coronal images are sort of adding in some of that extra current-based information. So I'm then wondering if, if you start using vector magnetograms as well as the coronal images, if you think that will even improve things further. Uh, yeah, definitely that's one of the ideas in the next steps. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Uh, well, I might ask one question. Could you maybe go b go back for to your presentation or say just a few words on uh, network topology? I just maybe a little bit escaped my mind. So what was the... Oh. Uh, so it depends the, the models, but like for the, magnet the magnetograms and coronal images, I just use pre-trained architectures, uh, efficient net V2. V2. Mm. Okay. And uh, for combining the, the different ones, I, I designed a customized... So I use two different approach, 3D convolutions. So the idea is that it's gonna extract features using the whole layers at the same time. So like cross atmospheric features and but So but it didn't have fully connected layers. Like no, only, uh, only at the end, yes. Only at the end. Convolutions okay. first, mm -hmm. you extract features uh, with the convolutions and then you use them in a fully connected layer at the end. And the second approach is to extract features uh, with 2D CNN, classical 2D CNN in parallel for each layers and combine these layers characteristic to, to each, uh, these features characteristic of each different layers in the end in the fully connected layer. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.